Hey everyone, and welcome to Skillcapped. I'm the King Live, and if you've ever watched players like Flexinja, Asuna, or Tens, I imagine sometimes you wonder how these players can play so aggressively at times and seemingly get away with it. But when I try to play aggressive, my enemies will just one tap me out of the air as if they're the best players in the world. This feeling exists at all ranks. There are times when I would be playing on a smurf in literally gold lobbies and Timmy who is gold two, just shoots through a smoke and his first bullet finds its way into my head. So how do players like Flexinja and Asuna get away with this? Well, we're going to talk about that today, so stick with us. But before we get into it, let's introduce our question of the day, which is if Omen were a fruit, which fruit would he be? I'm thinking he's a blueberry, but maybe he's a peach. You guys let me know in the comments down below. Let's start out with the basics of what you need to know about aggressive play though, or even what really is considered aggressive. Basically, the term aggressive suggests that there is some risk involved, and just for the purpose of this example, let's say there are two types of aggression. The first type is dumb aggression. The reason it's considered dumb is because a player is playing aggressively with little information or reason to why they are playing aggressive. They are risking a massive amount with this aggression because they don't know much about the situation. An example of dumb aggression would be running into Huko without using any utility. This is certainly aggressive, but it's also really dumb, hence the term dumb aggression. A more methodical approach to clearing hookah if they were to not use utility would be to slow it down and clear every angle carefully before moving on to the next. Now, it would still be a lot safer for you to use utility to clear this, but you'll notice it's probably a lot safer for a player to slowly clear hookah than it is for them just to wide swing out. And the reason for that is that if they move too quickly without any information, they heavily risk exposing themselves to too many angles and getting themselves killed. Notice how many angles wide swinging into hookah exposes you to. This is really bad in most situations and you want to avoid that. This is why we're calling it dumb aggression. Most of the time you're not going to want to wide swing into hookah without using utility. But you're also not going to want to all the time clear these angles slowly because this leaves you a lot more open to walking into a crossfire or getting caught off guard because eventually there are going to be angles that you won't be able to clear alone without utility. So what does this mean? Well, you guessed it, you're going to have to use utility. I know, crazy concept. There's more that goes into this and we're going to break it all down, but for the sake of this discussion, we're going to call this calculated aggression. This is a really cool play that I run with my friends at Immortal Lobbies using KO on Haven. Notice how I throw KO's knife against the garage door at the start of the round, it will clear out any enemies on the floor level. This means that if the knife tags anybody on the floor level, we know that somebody is playing there and when we push garage, we are going to use a flash to get in. However, if the knife does not tag anyone, that means that there is nobody on the ground floor. In both situations, what we like to do is smoke garage window, and now when we run this play, if somebody is on the ground floor, we are either going to flash them and likely kill them, or if they are not on the ground floor, we will run straight through garage knowing it's safe and quickly bombard into C, running a split with our C players. This is what we call calculated aggression. This is a very aggressive play because we literally full sprint from mid onto C site through garage, but the reason we know it is safe is because we've used our utility to protect us. If instead we ran into garage without smoking window and without recounting the door, we don't know if there are enemies there or not, we don't know if we should play more carefully to clear every angle, or if we should just keep going. This is the difference between dumb aggression and calculated aggression. But now that you guys understand that, I want to go over some of the top level players and content creators and how they can get away with playing aggressively so that you can better understand these plays. Because there really is a lot more that goes into it than there may seem. Before we get into it though, I did want to say if you really want to bring your game to the next level, I highly recommend you check out our hyper improvement system on skillcap.com. We have so much to offer, from in-depth guides on different mechanics like this, to smurf commentaries where a high ranked player will walk you through how to carry from bronze to immortal, it's all there. Plus, it's backed by our rank improvement guarantee, so if you don't feel like you've gotten value out of it, you'll be getting your money back, no questions asked. If you're really looking for the best way to bring your game to the next level, look no further than skillcap.com. Link in the description below. The first clip we're going to take a look at though comes from Flexinja, the aggressive omen himself. If you've never seen Flexinja play before, he's probably one of the best shots in the game. He's generally playing in Radiant slash High Immortal games, and honestly, some of his clips make Radiant players look like gold. Part of the reason for this is obviously his aim, but the other part is because his plays are generally at the very least least a little bit thought out. He's not just doing dumb stuff to do dumb stuff, normally he has a plan in mind that he intends to execute. Even if the plan is as simple as I'm going to blind this area and then teleport on them, there's always a plan. This is something I think is really important to start with because if you're going to play aggressively, you need to have a plan. If you just run in and at the first sight of conflict you don't know what to do, you're going to be in trouble, but if you know what you're going to do after you engage, it becomes a lot easier. Notice how right here Flexinja decides to blind heaven and then immediately goes for a TP into heaven. If he waits too long on this blind or even 
waits too long to use his teleport after, this plan doesn't work. Either his blind expires or the player pushed up too much before the blind and ends up getting a kill. You should try to always keep in mind what your plan is because if you don't have a plan, it's going to be really hard to play smoothly and intelligently. Over time, you're going to get better at developing a plan, but for now, just try to remember that your movements should be in sync. It's very rare to watch a player like Flexinja or Tens look confused. We're all too familiar with spectating players who look very confused. Confusion, remember, comes from a lack of understanding of what is going on around you. It's hard to be confused when you understand what is going on, like those two things directly contradict each other. So try your best to pay attention to what is going on around you and try to see opportunities within that information. In this case, Flexinja knew that he killed one player in main, there are currently two players shooting the door in tree, and there was a player in heaven with an operator. This means due to the timing of the round, the last player is very likely still rotating from B site, and if he's fast, he can take a 1v1 on the blind op user before dropping down to safety with his team. And keep in mind what I just said there. This round has moved very quickly, but Flexinja already has information on three of the four remaining players and a guess on the general vicinity of the last player. Because he killed one, he saw one heaven and two players are shooting the door right now. So that means that the last player is probably the B player who is rotating right now. This is what we call calculated aggression. He knows based on the information available to him, he is able to make an aggressive play. And as we mentioned earlier, it is risky. There's almost always going to be a risk involved in aggressive plays. Maybe this blind manages to miss and the opera kills him. Maybe the B player is closer than Flexinja anticipates and ends up killing him when he goes for this. That's also incredibly possible. But it's not nearly as risky as just making this play when he only knows the location of one player. And here's the cool thing about Valorant. The whole game really is about isolating gunfights. Notice all of these kills that take place, even though they happen quickly, are all isolated gunfights. The player in heaven, as we said, a risky engage, but still a 1v1. The player's pushing through tree, watch the way that he peeks them. He very slightly peeks out from dice and makes sure to isolate the two players. Then lastly, turning his attention towards the sky in heaven. If Flex just full swings into the two players on doors, it's possible they trade him out, but instead he quickly goes for a peek, lands the first shot, and then re-peeks a second later to finish off the other one. Flexinja played this round incredibly aggressively and actually aced this round, but definitely didn't shy away from a gunfight. However, he also made sure that when he did take a gunfight, he either wasn't exposing himself too much, or he was ensuring that's a 1v1 or a 2v1. This is a prime example of how to play aggressively without dying. Use your utility to make 1v1s easier and isolate your gunfights, making sure to only take fights that favor you. Make sure to have a plan, and if you're going to wide swing something, make sure that you use utility to make the fight favor you first. Let's move on to another clip though that will go into some more subtle things about aggression that a lot of players don't pick up on generally. Specifically, what I want to talk about with this clip is how players react to the things that you do. Because it's important to keep in mind, the enemy team is constantly reacting to the information they are given, just as the same as you are. So if I make noise, that means that they are going to hear that noise and react to it. And you can use this logic generally to make assumptions about how that player may react, you know, logically. The irony here is that sometimes at lower ranks, players won't exactly do what is logical, so sometimes it can be a little bit more difficult to predict their movement. However, for the most part, this sort of way of thinking will normally prevail, especially as you start climbing, which trust us, if you're following all of our guides closely, you will eventually start to see increase in rank, I promise. But back to this clip, notice how Flexinja is in a 1v2 with the bomb currently down. The enemy omen is going to smoke the bomb plants and Flexinja is going to make an attempt to jump onto the rope without making noise. Unfortunately though, he is going to mess it up and it will in fact make noise. So what does this mean? Well, it means that both enemy players know where he is, which is a really bad thing in a 1v2. Now, a lot of players after making this noise might try to pretend like they didn't and go back to walking, but you'll see after Flexinja notices that he messed up, he's going to go aggressive. He can't be sneaky anymore, they already know where he is, he has to act fast now because it's very possible these two players are going to double swing him. Now, because Flexinja decided to act fast, when the jet goes for an updraft, he catches her incredibly off guard and is able to land the first kill, and then he immediately turns his attention towards the omen, who has just started defusing the bomb. Here's the thing that a lot of players are going to miss though, and likely the reason many of you would have lost this round. How is this omen going to react to his jet being killed right now? I don't know about you, but I would not keep sticking this bomb if I know the omen is right above me and I'm in a 1v1. This is really important information here, because if Flexinja thinks this omen is still on the bomb, maybe he tries to spray through the smoke, or maybe he jumps right on top of the bomb, anticipating the omen to be there. However, he doesn't do this because he recognizes the omen likely has pulled off, and instead he decides to jump to the left of the bomb, pre-aiming at head level, expecting the omen to have pulled off and reposition. If Flexinja sprayed into the smoke from above, the omen would have prepared to swing out of the smoke and kill him while his recoil was kicking in. And if Flex had jumped right on top of the bomb, his pre-aim would have been completely off. But because Flex jumped to the left, which is a location that the omen was very unlikely to be standing, he was able to quickly land a headshot onto the omen and secure the round for his team. 
In this round, Flexinger recognized that he had to play aggressive because his cover was already blown, and if he had played this round any differently, it could have easily resulted in a loss. It really is the subtleties that are so important in aggressive plays. It's not generally just an aim difference, although having incredible aim sometimes bails you out when you make mistakes, it's more about how well you can isolate your gunfights and read situations to best find the most favorable course of action. Do you want to look at one more clip with me so we can highlight one more tactic higher ranked players use to craft these aggressive plays though? Well, I guess if you don't want to, you don't have to, but for those who do, let's take a look at Tens. Tens is pretty known for being one of the more exciting players to watch, part of it because of his incredible aim, but the other part being because of how good of a game sense he actually has. He just seems to always be aware of what's going on in the round and how to take advantage of every single little mistake his opponents make. Take a look at the beginning of this clip. Even during his first duel that he ends up taking over the corner of pipes, just having the awareness to recognize that there is an enemy there and this angle exists is really impressive. But moving on to how he aggresses safely here, completely catching the enemies off guard is really not as complicated as you think. For many players, it looks like Tenj just took the zipline across and somehow managed to not get killed. But the reason he knows he's probably free to take the zipline is because his Soviet utility already spotted both players on site. And as we've talked about before in many videos, we just need to remember what a standard defense setup will look like at this point to make a pretty good guess of where the rest of the enemies are right now. And this is part of the conflict with matchmaking because 90% of the time, the defense is going to be running a standard setup. There's probably two A, one boiler, one kitchen, and one at B at the start of the round. Meaning that 10 spots both players on A, that is likely all he has to deal with for at least a few seconds. Using this opportunity, Tens decides to take the zipline while the targets are occupied and is able to pick up the first kill on the enemy jet pretty much for free. But now things have started to get really bad as suddenly he has fallen into a 1v3. Now what Tens does here is incredibly flashy and I don't expect most players to be able to replicate this, but let's talk briefly about the thought process behind his plays so that you can at least understand why he's doing what he's doing so that you can replicate at least something similar in the future. Once Tens realizes he's in a 1v3, he knows that he needs to get a kill fast. So when he sees the Reyna spraying through the smoke towards him, he attempts to spray back briefly just hoping for a quick pick. If he ends up killing the Reyna through the smoke here, it will make his life a lot easier, but he can't just buckle down and pray for that. So after shooting a burst of bullets, he immediately looks to reposition. With some really clean movement, Tens is able to make his way into Nest so fast that it catches the enemy Sova really off guard, and this is a big thing about aggression that makes it really good at times. Sova just didn't expect Tens to already be up in Nest, because Tens moved so quickly, he was able to get the jump on Sova and pretty much get a free kill, but the play is not over yet. Notice how after Tens picks up the kill on Sova, he immediately once again repositions. By dropping down out of Nest, he gives up his previous position in an attempt to be less predictable. If he just stays in the same position, enemies can more easily prepare to double swing him, but by constantly repositioning after each kill, he's keeping the enemies on their toes. Because of this reposition, he catches the enemy Reyna off guard from yet again, an angle that she just wasn't expecting. And then immediately he turns his attention towards the Viper. He knows Viper has to be coming from CT, based on where her wall came from. So in an attempt to locate her as well as reset what she knows about his position, Tenz uses an updraft. This may seem like a risky move, but because he has his dash available, if it gets dicey, he is always able to dash away towards safety, and it's very unlikely that the Viper will land a headshot on Tenz quickly after he updrafts like this, so this is a great way for him to gather info during this clutch, as well as reposition. After he doesn't spot Viper approaching from rafters or back sight, he makes the assumption she's likely coming from screens and starts pre-aiming that direction until he spots her on the rope. Because she's not in position to really fight back, and neither is he, he sprays a few bullets and then quickly stops, jumps off the rope, and takes his time on the last shot, being sure to dash away even if he does miss, as to not give her a chance to trade back. Even if Tenz misses this shot, he's still in a 1v1 and has time on his side. Between strategically using his teammate's utility to close gaps, as well as repositioning quickly to isolate 1v1s and find picks when he needed them, Tenz played this clutch incredibly beautifully, and we can definitely all learn something from it. That's enough for this video though. If you guys are looking for more content just like this though, I highly suggest that you check out everything that we have available on skillcap.com. Link in the description below. Aggressive play is something that will take you a lot of time to perfect, but if you're going to be provided one tip to get better at it, it's that you need to try to make more aggressive plays more often. I know it sounds basic, but you can't get better at playing aggressive without not being afraid to make mistakes. There are going to be times when you try to make a play and get shut down. But remember, part of the reason that players like Tenz and Flexinja are able to make these crazy aggressive plays are because they frequently attempt these aggressive plays. For every successful play they have like this, there's probably a number of unsuccessful ones leading up to it. All players have times when they try something aggressive and get punished for it. Just by remembering it's a game and moving on from that point will really help you improve your play. Anyway though, if you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel down below. And if you learned something new, feel free to send this video to a friend. Maybe they'll find value in it too. As always, I'm the King Live, and we here at Skillcapped want to thank you all for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.